TF2 has a door problem, and in this video, I'm going to try to fix it. For those of you who've watched my shorts, you probably have an idea of what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't, don't worry because I'll be going through everything and covering additional things that aren't in my shorts. But before I dive in, we must first understand how TF2's doors work. In its simplest form, a door is made up of two brush entities. One being the door itself, known as a funk door, and the other being the trigger that opens it, which more often than not is a trigger multiple. Within the door's key values menu, you can specify the speed and direction with which it'll open. Within the trigger's key values menu, you can filter out a team from activating it or leave it empty for both teams to trigger. To make the door operate, you need to have one output for opening it and another for closing it. The on start and on end touch outputs accomplish this, but it's usually preferred to use the all variants, that way the door can't open and close over an existing player. So that's how doors work in TF2, but their actual implementation usually goes beyond this simple framework. For example, this one on bad water is textured with no draw, making it invisible, and that's because we're meant to see this door prop instead, which is just parented to the door so that it can move up and down. I'm not going to explain all the intricacies of doors for the sake of time, but there is one more thing I need to mention before we start diving into all of the problems, and that is spawn rooms. Every spawn room in TF2 is surrounded by one or more doors configured to open when the round starts or when a player from the designated team approaches it. Naturally, these doors are made to serve one crucial function, to harmlessly separate one team from the other. But as you've already seen through the clips I've shown, this often isn't the case. So without any further ado, let's take a look at TF2's door problem. To kick things off, many spawn room doors are penetrable by the opposing team. Now you might think that's just because the door is open, so obviously they can just walk in, but that's not the case, at least it's not supposed to be, thanks to this thing called a visualizer. Besides the door, this doohickey blocks players from walking into the opposing team's spawn room. And while there's nothing wrong with it, the way that Valve has implemented it in their maps is problematic. You see, this no entry texture on all of the visualizers is very small, only about 40 hammer units in diameter, while most spawn doors are about 200 units wide. So if you place the texture on a visualizer that stretches all the way across, it ends up repeating. This is why on many TF2 maps, we find that the texture scale has been increased. For example, this visualizer on Badwater has been scaled up to 0.6, and this one on 2 Fort to 0.5. But despite the texture scales being increased, we find that there's often still a gap on the side. Given the fact that a player's bounding box is about 49 units wide, this might not seem like a problem since any gap less than that wouldn't allow a player to squeeze through. And while it is possible to have a visualizer like this that doesn't cause any problems, it often does. Consider this spot on Dust Bowl that I featured in one of my shorts a while back. Even though the gap is just 44 units wide, which isn't wide enough to fit a player, it is wide enough to accept partner taunts through. The High Five, Flippin' Awesome, Rock Paper Scissors, Skull Cracker, Square Dance, and Fist Bump Taunts can all teleport players through the gap into the spawn room. In fact, as long as the distance between the two players is within 100 units and the right conditions are met, you can teleport into any spawn room using this method. I created this diagram that represents the dimensions at which this will work, with the red box representing a wall and the orange a visualizer. The only thing that really matters here is that you're able to establish a clear line of sight to your partner without there being any world geometry in the way of your bounding box. Now let's face it, trying to keep all of this in mind when making a door isn't practical, especially when you can just scale up the texture and stretch the visualizer all the way across. Or if you don't want to scale it up, you can add another visualizer over the first one and texture it with no draw. Lastly, if your map is made for Halloween and includes the Minify spell, make sure the gap isn't big enough to run through. I'd personally close it off completely to be on the safe side. Knowing all of this, it seems as though the simplest solution is to cover the entire spawn exit with one or more visualizers. But sometimes that's not enough thanks to our good old friend the teleporter. As we all know, you can't place it or any of Engineer's other buildings in spawn. And that's because of this entity called a Funk Respawn Room, which as the name suggests, marks the spawn room, but also prevents any buildings from being thrown up within its volume. If the boundary of this entity doesn't fill the entire space, like it did in this room on Frontier until literally a few days ago, you can build. It also serves as the parent to the visualizers, otherwise they wouldn't work. 
Now, just because you can't build in it doesn't mean you can't build right next to it. In fact, if you line yourself up parallel to the edge and slowly creep out of its volume, you can build a teleporter the moment your origin leaves the region. Now usually this isn't a problem in TF2 maps because if an enemy spy uses your teleporter, they'll get stuck in the visualizer and be trapped. Not even a partner taunt can set them free. Or can it? If the visualizer is positioned inside of the respawn room, you can't, because the direct line of sight from the origin of you and your partner is blocked by it. But if it's merely touching it, you can taunt your way into the spawn and wreak havoc. This can be seen on maps like Hoodoo and Mercenary Park that don't meet the necessary criteria for the first method, but do for this. The solution to this problem is to pull the respawn room forward, move the visualizer back, or thicken it so that there's no gap between them. Alternatively, you can add a Funk no-build entity around the door, like we see on Gold Rush, just don't make it too big to the point where players have to move far away from the spawn to start building. But whatever you do, don't expand the respawn room past the visualizer, particularly in forward spawns on single-staged maps, because if you do, players can clip into the edge from the outside and teleport back to their active spawn. This was possible on Upward until this patch released back in June of 2022. It still works on other maps like Gorge and Mercenary Park, and perhaps several more from other game modes and community-made maps. So that covers the first part of this video, going through doors. Let's now take a look at dealing damage through them, starting with Dust Bowl's gates, which are just two models parented to these two funk doors that open when the round starts. Inspecting it in Hammer, nothing seems wrong. And the same goes for in-game. The two doors cover the entire region with no gaps, so what's the problem? There are actually multiple, but let's start with this. For some reason, if you stand inside of a teammate and fire the flamethrower, the particles appear to go right through the door. Because Pyro's flame particles start to emit about 4 hammer units past his bounding box, if you stand inside of a teammate against a wall or door up to 4 units thick, the flame particles spawn on the other side and damage enemy players within their vicinity. But why does this require a teammate? I honestly don't know. Whatever the reason is, this can be fixed by making your funk doors at least 5 units thick. But you're not clear yet. Again, due to some source spaghetti, the flame particles can still travel above, below, and next to the door. And Soldier can taunt kill you if he calls Medic while performing the Kamikaze taunt. I actually made an entire video about this a while back, so if you're interested in all of the different ways that you can reach enemies through doors and walls, I'll have it linked in the description. Now unfortunately, there's no way to fix these problems. At least no easy way. I might do some more rigorous testing and share what I find, but for now, we're just gonna have to accept this as part of TF2. There are a couple of cases though that can be fixed. One such case is on Pier. Next to these funk doors is a prop with its collision setting set to not solid. This allows you to shoot through it before the round starts to get some cheeky kills. As far as fixing it goes, you can enable collisions on the model, which will block bullets and projectiles, but it's better to extend the funk doors until they meet the wall, just to make sure that there aren't any gaps left over. Another case is on Whatville. Because the doors are in front of the spawn room entity, you can build a sentry between them, and when the enemy team captures the point and starts spawning here, they'll die to the sentry even while the doors are closed. There are multiple ways to fix this, the easiest being to add a no-build entity in the path of the door. Apparently, Whatville is going to be receiving an update this season, so I'm curious to see how the mapper will address this issue. Now, I saved this door on 2 Fort for the end of this segment because it highlights an issue that other maps like Mercenary Park tried to fix. If a hostile player walks underneath it before the friendly one leaves the trigger, it'll try to close but get stuck on their bounding box, allowing them to fire into the spawn room. This happens because the visualizer is positioned behind the funk door, so when it's open, an enemy player can stand underneath it. When it gets stuck, it stays this way until the player dies, moves out of the way, or when someone triggers it to reopen. Again, I made an entire short about this specific door that you can check out in the description. The easiest way to fix this problem is to position the visualizer in front of or along the funk door. So what does this have to do with Mercenary Park? Well, on this map, if you get caught underneath one of the spawn doors while it's closing, it'll just kill you. And that's because their key value for blocking damage is set to 1 million. While this does solve the problem we face in 2 Fort, it also creates a new one. When the first point is captured, these team spawn entities for red are disabled, as well as this trigger for opening the door. 
For those who are still in the spawn room when this happens, they can use this other trigger that only covers the interior side of the door to leave. But if you do so too slowly, the door will kill you. This is because the trigger to open it ends 13 units before the door, so it starts to close before you've left its vicinity. And to put the cherry on top, they have this delay before reset key value turned on, so the door opens back up after it kills you. The same phenomenon occurs with gorgeous spawn doors, the only difference being that they don't kill you. Once it's open, it'll stay that way until you come back and leave the trigger without dying. Kinda defeats the whole purpose of killing you, doesn't it? You've probably seen this happen before with this door right here because its gap is a whopping 13 and a half units, enough to catch a revved up heavy and scoped in sniper. There's no reason why the doors need to be this way. If it were up to me, I'd just extend the trigger up to the front of the door, that way nobody gets crushed. And to prevent players from holding it open, I'd add an invisible visualizer along the front. But if you'd rather kill them, I guess you can skip this step. So that covers all of the ways you can die from, deal damage through, and pass through doors. The last bunch I want to go over are the quirky ones, starting with this one on Dust Bowl. If you stand underneath it when it closes, you get pushed up into the air. And if you walk backwards, it sends you flying. Now how does this make any sense? To start, the visualizer is behind the door, so you can prevent it from closing by standing up against it. In the door's key values, we can see that its move direction is set to down instead of up. This causes the door to slide down and then up instead of the other way around. Valve probably didn't realize this because the funk door opening fires a set animation input to this dynamic door prop to also open and close. And because the input doesn't take into account which way the funk door travels, the door can move in any direction and the prop will still animate the same way. Since the door travels down first, when you get stuck, it's trying to move back up. But it can't because your bounding box gets stuck on this tiny lip on the ceiling. The moment you clear it, the door finishes its cycle and pushes you up at a speed of 900 units per second, which we can see here in the key values menu. As far as fixing it goes, we can just add another visualizer at the front because if you just fix the door's direction, you can still get stuck beneath it and then shoot into the enemy team's spawn since the door prop doesn't have any collisions. Remember, the funk door is the bread and butter of this operation. The prop is purely cosmetic. On the topic of getting stuck in doors, that's exactly what can happen with this one on Badwater. It's configured to forcefully close when the second point is captured, and to prevent players from getting trapped between it and this other one, Valve added a trigger hurt brush. But if you look closely, you can see a gap between the funk door and the trigger hurt, meaning you can stand underneath the door while it closes without touching the trigger. Since the door is inside of you, you can't move. It's incredibly rare for this to happen in an actual game because you have to be within a range of 4 units at the exact moment the second point is captured. But I've seen this happen before, and it can technically be fixed by extending the trigger hurt region to encompass the funk door. A similar case occurs in Hoodoo. For some reason, if the door closes on you as you stand up against red spawn, instead of stopping on your bounding box, it goes through you. What makes this weird is that if I copy all of the logic over to my test map, this doesn't happen. Instead, the door collides with my bounding box and reopens. This is what I would expect to happen since the door has delay before reset enabled, but for whatever reason, it works differently in Hoodoo. I guess I'll have to leave that one unsolved for now, but as I've already explained, this problem can be avoided by adding another visualizer. Moving on to the last door of the video, we have this one on Frontier that you may not have even known existed. The only reason why I pay any attention to it is because of its logic. It's an ordinary one-way door that is configured to open after the second point has been captured. If you study all of the inputs and outputs, all seems to be well. And if you play a game, everything seems to work properly. But if you hold the door open as the point is captured, it'll shut permanently. Why does this happen if the relay tells the door to open? Well, it's because of the other input it sends to the trigger. The mapper set it to disable, which inadvertently causes this on and touch all input to fire, because by disabling it, you're no longer touching it, and this line's input tells the door to close. Since the door's trigger is now disabled, there's no way to reopen it. Fortunately, the solution here is the easiest of all the ones I've given in this video. All you have to do is change this input in the Relay's Outputs tab from Disable to Kill, which will prevent the trigger's on and touch all output from firing, opening the door regardless of whether it's being held open. So that's TF2's door problem. 
I hope you found it interesting and that the solutions I provided can help mappers prevent door stuck. Thank you for watching. This is LED switching off.